and welcome to the studio. My name is Simon Nobbs and um, I want to bring you another professional how-to tips video and today I'm going to concentrate um, specifically on uh, hand-painted uh, kitchens and bathroom cabinet units that kind of thing um, and I'm going to be talking about preparation I've had I have a lot of uh, requests over the last few weeks uh, regarding preparation so that, um, for, for, for repainting um, kitchen cabinets etc so I want to bring you my my own take on on how I um, prepare the the units um, it, that, that that may be pre-painted uh, cabinet units kitchen units it may be um, uh, a dark wood you may have a dark oak or something or an oak finish which has been uh, sealed or lacquered in some way uh, you may have uh, a melamine type finish or a laminate finish on your units that might be a matte finish a, a satin or a gloss a high gloss finish in all these cases the preparation is pretty much the same I use the same techniques for all those types of surfaces if I'm repainting or if I'm starting from scratch so to start with we need to you need to clean the surface um, it doesn't matter what it is if it's a new surface uh, if it's an existing surface you need to clean it first so you can use something like this which are the uh, the wipes they're, um, they're, they're a multi-surface wipe they clean off grease and dirt that kind of thing you could also use something like white spirit if it's really greasy surface you could use methylated spirits for example and of course soap and water washing up a little bit of washing up liquid that all those things all those techniques will work just as well and you may even need to use a combination of all of those um, materials those, those chemicals to to clean the surface depending on how dirty or greasy it is I have covered this um, in in some detail in, in previous videos on YouTube so have a look out for those uh, today I'm going to be using these uh, ultra grime wipes for doing the cleaning so once the cleaning's done you then go on to sanding and keying the surface so depending again on what the surface condition is like if it's been previously painted there may be drips or runs it may not be a particularly good good finish so you may need to use a, a coarser sandpaper like this one it's an 80 grit if it's a new surface a new wood um, plain wood then something like these pads the medium and fine pads are fine if it's again if it's a, a, a high gloss um, melamine type finish or laminate finish you'll need to key it clean it obviously then key it again these pads or these sandpapers are ideal for that dust off obviously and then a wipe down with a damp cloth and then we go on to the primer now for most situations when you're repainting or starting from scratch painting units I would use a good quality primer this one is a very good one from Zinza uh, the Bullseye 123 primer it's a water-based acrylic primer um, it's used on multiple surfaces you can use it on bare wood inside and out you can use it on melamine type surfaces you can use it on tiles on glass on very shiny surfaces 
So it's a good universal primer and sealer. So this is what I would use for, for most situations. Zinza also do a shellac based primer, the BIN primer, which is ideal for surfaces that perhaps have been previously waxed or they may have a shellac type finish on them that you feel you need to give an extra um, key or an extra seal before painting. So you look out for that. But again, I've covered these products in previous uh, videos on YouTube. So have a look out for that. So this primer, most primers come in either a black or white. This one, can't, this is a white, pure white. Another tip I want to give you before we start painting. What I tend to do when I'm preparing and painting a surface is look at the finished color that's going to be applied. If you're applying a very pale color, an off-white for example, or, or a pale cream, then the white primer is absolutely fine. If you're applying a very dark finish um, or a black for example or a dark grey then you can use one of the uh, black um, primers for that um, and for colours in between that I tend to mix up the colour the colour of the primer roughly to match the finished colour of the paint, um, which whichever type of paint you're using, if that's an oil-based or an acrylic-based uh, eggshell or satin wood, for example. So I tend to buy the white primers. I also tend to buy, have a, have a selection of um, primers in different colors. These. B-Deck multi-surface paints are primer and finish all in one. They come in a variety of colors. Um, I tend to get, I tend to have a selection of, uh, 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 a stock of black and I always have a stock of white. These primers can be mixed, pre-mixed by your paint supplier. So if for example you are painting Re or repainting for example your kitchen units your cabinets and you want to have a for example a mid to well say a mid to darkish greeny color for example you can mix these primers you can have them pre-mixed by your supplier uh, your paint supplier they don't they, they're the tints the, that they use and the, the, the mixes they use for mixing up the colours, they're not completely accurate to what you'll, what you'll see on a colour card, but they'll be close enough. Another way of doing it, is which I've done here, is simply to have a selection of black um, and white, and then these two can be mixed quite happily together, as I've done here. So I've mixed them up into a mid, uh, into a light to mid grey colour. Now the units that I'm going to be painting today, the priming today, are going to be finished in a mid grey finish. Um, it's going to be a water based uh, satin finish. So I've simply mixed up a little bit of black into the white, into a kettle to create um, a light to mid grey. The advantage of doing this is if you're starting from scratch, say you're starting from a, um, a, 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 a wood finish, um, say a, um, a, an MDF or a, a pine or something like that on your cabinets. If you start off with a white primer and then you use this is a primer undercoat, so you, you, you use this as primer and then undercoat 
and then you go on to paint your units so you may put two or three top coats on of a uh, of a darkish cut, uh, shade say a, say a, a mid green mid to dark green or a, um, a gray or something if that surface should get damaged should get chipped knocked etc the you you may find that the the, the the paint is scratched and it's scratched back to the white which it makes it very obvious that the scratch is there for, for a start you know you'll you'll scratch off the first few layers of paint and you'll get down to your primer which is white and that will make the 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 scratch even more obvious if you start off with the same color and you're working with the same color all the way through or this or very close to the same color um, I should say in the in the primer right the way through to the finished top coat if it should get scratched if it should get damaged then there's less chance for that scratch to be noticed um, too much um, so you, you 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 will find that the, the, the kitchen will will wear and look better for longer so that that's why I do that so so say in this instance I've mixed a little bit of black in with the white to create a pale to mid to mid gray finish you can obviously vary that you can have a very dark finish say you're 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 choosing a um, a dark blue uh, dark blue is very popular at the moment for kitchens and, and for example bathroom cabinets you could quite easily mix up a mid to dark grey using these two paints and that will give you a good surface a good primed colour for applying your your top coats on and it will also um, mean that you won't have the, the color won't grin through so much so if you're using a brilliant white and you're using uh, as a primer and you're using a uh, mid to dark blue for your top coat you're going to have to put a quite a few coats on to, to cover this white whereas if your colors are very similar then you would only need to put maybe two two top coats whereas you might need to put three so that's a little tip before we go on to do any priming have a think about your primer and think about whether or not you need to color that primer or have it colored by your supplier to match in with your top coats so to get started I'm going to unpack um, a couple of doors and just show you how I'm going to prepare those doors. So here we have a typical pre-finished laminate type door. Uh, this one is from IKEA. Now um, the surface is a sort of a sheen finish I guess it's not too glossy it's not it's not completely matte um, it's a very smooth tough finish but it's the wrong color now the, um, for this for this particular kitchen um, we need a gray finish but the gray is not quite right and also these doors are being added to an existing painted kitchen so we need this finish to look like it's been hand painted hand painted finish is very different from this this sort of effect that you've got with this this um, this laminate finish this, this is almost a spray like finish so I need to prepare this surface I need to clean it, I've taken the label off, I need to clean it, give, give it a wipe over, it needs to be keyed, we need to key the surface to make sure that the top coats adhere properly 
to this surface. This surface is not the best surface for paints. So as I was saying before, if we use something like the uh, Zinza 123 Primer Sealer, that is ideal for this type of surface. It will stick well to it and the subsequent coats of your top coats which will get which as I say will be a um, acrylic uh, satin satin wood finish those coats will stick very well to that primer so let's get started As I said before, you don't need to use wipes. You can use something like a methylated spirit if you have that handy, or you could use um, a little bit of white spirit, or just um, in this something like this, you could, you could use a bit of soap and water, washing up liquid, that something like that. But the idea is to remove any grease or sticky from things like stickiness from labels and that kind of thing anything that's come from come from the warehouse so that's that give that a quick dry off so we take our medium to fine medium or fine uh, pad give it a good key all over Remove any dust. This is now ready for priming. surface out and there we have it allow that to dry you can use a hair dryer to dry it off if you need to speed up the process I've got another three doors to do like that once this, once that side is dry you can flip it over do the other side leave that to dry so there we are thank you for watching and please, please look out for more videos on YouTube and also check out my website www.southcoaststudio.co.uk for information on everything I've been up to, everything I do in the studio here and also uh, the courses that I provide, both studio based courses and the online courses. So please have a look at that. Thank you.